All right. Hello uh, and welcome to my talk. It's my party and I'll build my own virtual social platform if I want to. My name is Sarah Farquharson. I'm at Fabrifact on Twitter. I'm going to talk to you about why I wanted to throw a virtual birthday party in the first place. Uh, mainly it's because I like making a big deal out of my birthday. As you heard in that introduction, uh, I have previously thrown a cello concert. I have baked hundreds of cupcakes for complete strangers at events. Uh, I have gone to Europe twice. I like doing a big thing and potentially inviting all my friends to participate. Uh, in 2021, I was thinking maybe I would rent a castle in France. And then COVID happened and it turns out that throwing big parties or going to France were not on the table, but I still wanted to do something and I wanted to be able to invite uh, all of my friends. I have a lot of, I have a distributed friends network um, of people all over the world. Um, so where could I hold it? The simplest solution is video call software. All of us has gotten very familiar with Zoom over the past year. Um, multiplayer games are another option. I have gone to concerts in Minecraft and birthday parties in Animal Crossing. And there has been an explosion of purpose-built social spaces just for holding events uh, in a more uh, fun way than, than either of these two other two options, including Skittish, where we're holding the hallway tracks for Bang Bang Con this year. Um, so which of these did I want to choose? First, I have to know what makes a good party for me. The, one of the first things that has to be accessible, and I don't necessarily mean in the closed captioning sense, although that is very important as well, but just people being able to access it. If I were to have my birthday party in France, only my friends who can afford to go to France would be able to come. Same thing if I hold my party in VR chat, only my friends who have VR rings would be able to attend. So I have to think about what kind of tools everybody will need to use to participate. Then I would like to be personal and personalize it a lot. You can't tell anything this uh, image in the in the top corner, but for real life parties, I have spent dozens of hours hand making dozens of LED candles to string from the ceiling uh, to get a floating candle effect. I like personalizing my space. And I also like personalizing my look. This is what I look like. And I like uh, dressing interesting at real parties so that uh, it forms a conversation starter. Um, and I like having that in my virtual spaces as well. I also like it to be spatial. Um, the worst kind of party that you go to is uh, everybody stands in a big circle listening to the two most opinionated people talk. In a really good party, uh, like a house party, the, there'll be people in every room talking about different things. These people over here are watching YouTube. These people are talking about cooking. Uh, some people are or throwing ball in the backyard, getting that effect of where you can wander from room to room and see what different people are up to, join this uh, party, go see the cat in another room. Uh, that's uh, a really valuable thing that I would like to replicate in a virtual space. Speaking of pets, pets are an extremely important part of parties because that's uh, how your introverts can interact with people without having to walk up to a group of strangers and insert themselves into a conversation. Instead, you go and find the cat and everybody just talks about how cute the cat is. Uh, Kate Compton here at Bang Bang Con, actually in skittish, introduced me to a great term for this from Gretchen McCulloch called cheese plate, <laughs> which is another way of thinking it. In a real party, you have the cheese plate, which both you go into the kitchen to get some cheese and you talk to people about, oh, have you tried that one? And also it gives you a way to leave conversations in a polite way. You just say, oh, sorry, got to go grab some more charcuterie from the board. Um, so having those sort of interactive ways and reasons to move from space to space are very important. Um, and the cheese plate or the chat pet uh, implies more than just the conversation topic. It's also that interactive thing. Um, there's been a lot said about how video is important uh, on when trying to communicate online, because that way you can you can see faces. It's more than just words. And in a virtual space, I want either to be able to, you know, for the person I'm talking to, to know that I'm laughing at their joke, even if my microphone isn't on. I want to be able to wave at somebody across the room without necessarily interrupting whoever's speaking. And a lot of times I want to sit in the corner, maybe doing something weird and see if anybody comes to join me. That's what I do at real parties. And I want to be able to do that in a virtual party as well. So maybe we have some kind of virtual drawing space uh, off in the corner there. So which of these spaces meets the requirements? Video calls are pretty much right out. They only support that kind of uh, one or two people talking at a time and everybody else is just an audience. And it's hard to get a real party feeling of that. Multiplayer games can be great, but I don't actually play any of them. And so I don't know any that all of my friends would find accessible. So the purpose-built social spaces seem to be so great. 
unfortunately, a lot of the best ones like Skittish and RC together, um, they're not even out for public consumption now, let alone when I was trying to work on this in December 2020. And the other ones that were available were fine, but Gather was one of the ones that I tried that was almost right, but I couldn't make my character have blue hair, and that was really important to me, and I couldn't do a custom map the way I wanted. So obviously I decided to build my own space. Uh, it seemed obvious, like it had been almost a year since people started putting events online. Why hadn't anybody started, uh, why hadn't anybody successfully made this? So I was gonna build my own. First off, I need a UI. I know that I like that game-like UI. So using a web-based game framework seemed obvious. It would be accessible to anybody with a browser um, and the game framework would handle all the putting in maps and avatars moving around so I wouldn't have to write as much code. I found a game framework written in JavaScript called Phaser that did most of what I wanted to. And a lot of these things, you can use the tiled map editor. These are all open source software. You can just make maps using free assets. And for free, now I have a great UI. Now I need to communicate with people. This is definitely the hardest part of it, but there is a, a protocol called WebRTC. It's an open source technology for peer-to-peer -peer communication. The RTC stands for real-time communication. So it does real-time audio and video as peer-to-peer. -peer. It's open source. There's tons of libraries available uh, and it works just in your web browser. Um, it's good that the libraries are available because implementing it from scratch is a little tricky if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but I found an another open source project called Jitsi uh, which is a video conferencing software. It uses WebRTC under the hood and it allows you to do video conferences and also modify it. So here I could modify and put my own visual front end instead of the regular visual call, video call front end. So to add that feeling of space, uh, the magic sauce is to make multiple conversations possible is audio spatialization. With the Jitsi uh, video conference, all you have is that video conference problem of everybody in the same room. But with spatialization, if you're on a map, uh, as you get further away from a sound, it gets quieter until finally you can't hear it at all. So if you're different people standing in different parts of the map can have different conversations while well, technically being in the same room still. So you can still easily wander from one conversation to another. It seems perfect. And luckily somebody had already made an open source library to do audio spatialization wrapped around Jitsi. It seemed I was home free. And in about two weeks, I had managed to make a uh, this little map here where I had avatars, I could join the call, I would have video and audio and it would be spatialization. Seems like I'm home free, right? This is when I learned the hard way why my perfect system did not exist already. The main thing comes down to performance. Peer-to-peer -peer connections, especially using video, do not scale. If I want to have a hundred people at my video at my virtual birthday party, I would have to be sending my video stream to a hundred people and receiving a hundred people's video streams. And it turns out it falls apart at more like half a dozen. Um, and in order for that spatialization to work, as I said, you're all in the same room. So you can't even cut it out by, oh, 10 people over in this room and 10 people over in that room without losing that spatialization aspect. So now, uh, and then you add your game front end on JavaScript on top, and it's just a performance nightmare. So now you have to have a server. You need to learn how to run a server uh, that will take all of that video and audio and crunch it into a custom stream for every person. So either you have to do a lot of server coding or you have to pay a third party who will do this for you. Um, and it, it is, does take quite a lot of server performance. So there's not really any free services available for this. Then that's not even getting into all the polish. You maybe want authorization so only people you invited can come to your party. You want error handling so that when something goes wrong, your friends can reconnect. You want to, more customization. You want actual accessibility so everyone has an equal opportunity. You want to maybe moderate it to kick people out if they behave badly. So in the end, I didn't successfully hold my party in my own virtual social space, but I learned a lot and I'm gonna keep working on it. And I'm really looking forward to things. Uh, I think there will be better tools in the future to build this kind of thing yourself if the off the shelf tools aren't working for you. I think having performance spatial audio libraries that allow you to plug in a custom UI will be great. And having a kind of character creator that I could have just put into my system would have made it easy to make custom avatars for everybody. The main thing I think that the current systems are lacking are better cheese plates. I think 
right now there's not a lot you can do in any of the social spaces other than walking up and talking to people about how neat this social space is. Having more interactive things that you can build or game-like systems. Speaking of which, the level design is uh, of the spaces needs to encourage people to form small groups rather than the one big circle where only the two most extroverted people talk. So I have tried out a bunch of virtual social platforms. There's a bunch of them out there uh, and more are being developed all the time. I, I will share these links later. If you wanna know more about this topic, M. Laser Walker has written a ton of really great resources on building social platforms like this and the, the design considerations and technical problems, as well as Kate Compton has some great talks on designing for social creativity. Uh, you can also go back and read Gretchen McCulloch's talk on cheese plates. So thank you very much for coming to my talk and maybe I will see you in a virtual world uh, near you.